Hello guys, it's been a while, and I'll give you the reasons first as to why it's been a while before I actually get into the toy review. Uh, my computer died very, very recently, and I needed to buy a new one. And I needed to find the right one, and then I needed to get the software. And then that's how we got here today. It's just taken a, a good deal of time to get to the point where I'm able to do a video and get all the stuff I want to do it. Get uh, all different bits of software to make sure everything is nice. Uh, well, as nice as it can be, anyway. So that's uh, that's why it's taken so long. But I've decided to bring you something a little different. As you can tell from the title at the top, I'm going to be having a look at some Lego. This is the first time I've been looking at Lego ever uh, on my YouTube channel. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, it's the it's a big set. <laughs> it's the Helm's Deep uh, Lego set from Lord of the Rings. So. Uh, yeah, get ready for a long one, because there's a lot to talk about with this set. I uh, hope you guys enjoy it, so uh, yeah, let's get straight on with the video, I think. So here it is, guys, the Helm's Deep LEGO Lord of the Rings set. The biggest set so far released under the Lord of the Rings theme for, obviously, LEGO. And it is huge, as you can tell. But I think before we talk about the actual uh, Deep itself, we'll have a look at the minifigures, which some could argue is the most important thing for a LEGO set. So the first little minifigure we'll start off with here is the Urukai soldier. Uh, he's got this nice shield, uh, which has the cool points on the bottom there and the little uh, curve in the top there, just like in the movies. Uh, it's held on by the usual peg with a twisted hand, and he's got the classic scimitar with a point on the back there, so he can like uh, stab people with this side if he wants to, or just blade them with the other side. You know, say so chop, 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 all that good stuff. And uh, we'll take that out of his hand. Uh, just have a look at the actual figure himself, and he looks really accurate. He's got the cool helm on here, again, very accurate to how it is in the movies. Uh, the face sculpt here has the white hand of Saruman on it, uh, but it's got two faces. Uh, it's got this just normal pissed off Urukai as well, so that's awesome. In my day, we only had one face. Uh, we'll take this off, though, and here is his armor piece. Uh, again, something we had back in the day. Uh, to reveal the awesome painted detail... Uh, on the actual minifigure itself, and it's got this nice kind of leathery look to it. It looks uh, all nice and beefy, uh, which I appreciate, so you just pop his head back on there, and, you know, there's a, another minifig, or you can have him like that, just for a bit of variation. And speaking of variations, here are another two that you get. I've given this one two choppers, and this one a halberd without the armor, uh, so you can just smash them together. Uh, just like that, because I'm a child. Uh, we've got the Berserker next here, who's all nude and whatnot. Uh, I, I'm not sure if he should be wearing such tiny little panties, but whatever. Uh, he's got lovely chest here with the white hand on there and nice back detail. Mine does have this cut in the back, though, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, the head is quite cool. Uh, it's got nice detail on it again, but I kind of would have preferred it to have actually been a helmet here like this. Uh, that you'd put on over a normal Urukai head, because, you know, that's meant to be a helmet, uh, so it would have been better like that, but, you know, can't have everything, I suppose. Uh, but he does also come with his bomb, or a bomb, I should say. That's worth just having a quick look at it. Now, it's not too bad, it's a bit hard to pick up on the black background I've got, but it looks okay for a, a bomb-shaped device. Uh, and he also has something to light it. He has this little flame thingy here, which I like to put on his head in humiliation, if I can get it in there. Uh, I like to put his arms up in the air and have him running around screaming, going, Oh my god, my head's on fire! Ah! Oh, why is my life so terribly painful? Ah! I have so much fun with Lego. Uh, next up, we have Gimli, who is a dwarf, of course. Uh, we'll have a quick look at his weapons first, because it'll make it easier. We've got a short little axe, which is, you know, one of the axes he carried in the movies. Uh, and, you know, we'll get rid of that because he's got the bigger axe. Uh, again, very much uh, like in the movies. And that's the that's the one he really likes. Uh, the actual minifigure himself is really cool. Arguably one of the best, I'd say. Uh, he does have the tiny little legs here that don't move, which is a shame. But it does give him the dwarf-like uh, stature. Uh, compared to the other minifigures, which is good. And he's got this fantastically done helmet. Not only is it sculpted well, but it's got all this lovely painted detail on it as well. It's fantastic. Uh, really good representation. And his head here uh, does, believe it or not, have uh, two on. It's a bit difficult to get off because of the beard. Uh, but here's his first face. You know, look, he's angry there. Uh, and 
you can sort of balance it just in the beard. You turn it around and that's his calm face. Uh, unfortunately, the beard does cover most of the expression, but you get he's angry here because he's got big angry eyebrows. Uh, the actual beard piece itself, again, very good. It's also uh, considered a hair piece as well, uh, but it does cover all of this lovely detail on his chest as well and his back just because of the size of it, which is kind of a shame because it is very well done. Uh, and you have them all together, and he looks very, very good, I would say. Very impressive little minifigure. Next up, we have Haldir, I think his name is. Uh, you know, he's quite cool. He's not the Legolas that I wanted, and he does have the bow, which they've never been able to do too well for Lego. Uh, the only way you can kind of get him to have it like he's drawing it is kind of finagle it round a bit like this and turn him to the side. Uh, but then you'd need to turn the head like uh, so, and the hairpiece doesn't really allow it to turn, so he'd kind of be like that, and his ears would be in his eyes and kind of all awkward and whatnot. So we'll just put him back the way he was and take that away. Uh, he does have another face sculpt, uh, as well as the nice material cloth here. Here's his angry face, because he's wanted to kill some dudes, and he, again, a very well-painted little minifigure to make him nice and distinct among the rest, and he does have stuff on the back as well, underneath the cloak. Uh, so that's, yeah, you know, these minifigs really go all out, and he's got this cool hairpiece uh, with the nice little elven ears and braids and whatnot. Uh, very elven-like, you know. And we'll pop that on his head. And again, he really stands out as the elf because of them pointy ears. But because it is long hair, as I mentioned, it kind of restricts the head movement, which is a shame. But uh, yeah, very cool. Uh, next up, Aragorn. Probably my most disappointing one here because he does have just a normal sword. Uh, and he's just a bit boring compared to the rest of them, I find. Uh, though he does have nice detail on him. He is in the Strider outfit. Uh, he's got a very stern look on his face. He does have stubble, uh, and he's got back detail as well, but not much. The hair piece isn't too bad, but we take it off, and we've got his angry face, again, with stubble on. So that's how he'd look like as I turned his head around. So we'll pop that back on there. Uh, so yeah, he's okay, but a little boring compared to the rest. Uh, next up, we have Theoden, who is incredibly impressive he does again have a bit of a boring sword i would have liked him to have his proper sword but what can you do uh he does have i think this is the captain america shield but obviously repainted and purposed for theoden and it looks like it's a you know roheran shield or i think that's how you say it um and this detail on the armor is crazy compared to this the urukai one I mean, it's all the same, but all this detail makes it stand out so much. And the helmet here, uh, it, it really does look so accurate to the movie stuff for, you know, a miniaturized Lego version. You've got all the detail just painted on or tampographed on or something. It uh, just makes it cool. Uh, so he does have an angry face and he has a happy face as well because, you know, got to have Theoden a little bit happy sometimes. Uh, we'll take off his armor piece and we can see he's got a uh, nice kind of chain y legs. But then a kind of relaxed kind of tunic top, which works well, especially when he's uh, happy, you know. He does require a hairpiece, though, I find, because uh, he's not bald. So that's what he'd look like if he had some hair. It would be better, though, if it wasn't Aragorn's hair. Uh, but what are you going to do? Uh, next up, or finally, is the horse, which is a new horse. Uh, as far as I'm aware, back in my day, they didn't look quite so good. Uh, they had this... A nice paint detail on them still, but and they also had this, you know, up and down head movement. But something they've recently done to put that back is they've given it extra articulation so you can have it kind of rear up on its hind leg, which gives a really nice bit of action to the the simple horse, which uh, you know didn't really do too much back in the day. Uh, nice saddle as always, very standard. And I do have the blocks there uh, that you can fill in if you don't have the saddle, but no point showing that really. Uh, so let's suit up Theoden and there you go, you know, the king of Rohan on a horse. It's kind of how it should always be, I would say. And you know, you rear him up on his legs and he's truly ready to kill some Urukai orcs or anything coming out of Mordor. Very, very good little uh, accessory there. Not really a minifig, but whatever. And these are all of the little minifigs you get with this big set. Obviously the bigger sets come with a lot more dudes. Uh, but for me, this is a really good selection of characters. It is missing Legolas, unfortunately, but you need to get the Mines of Moria to get him. 
Uh, but for the most part, you get everything you need to basically recreate your Helm's Deep battle set. So that pleases me, and you get a lot of cool things. Hirokai are nice and uh, interchangeable. The more you have, the more you can kind of customize with armor, without a helmet, with helmet, without armor, with the shield, without a shield, with a halberd, without a halberd. You know, you can do whatever you like. I kind of would have liked the Berserker as well to come with his giant uh, dual, uh, double-bladed weapon, but what can you do? Uh, but yeah, that that pretty much covers all of these awesome little minifigs, so I suppose we should move on to the castle part and its features. So we'll start here with the outer wall, and as you can see it's got the drainage system and a little bit of lake coming through, which is all very good with all these nice uh, details. Uh, on the back, however, it's not quite as impressive to look at, but that's because it's all down to a little feature here, and that feature is controlled by the handle. Uh, yep, this is the exploding wall. So what you would do is you'd get your bomb here uh, and set that up nicely in the drain. Get your berserker and he'd go, I'm gonna blow you up! <laughs> uh, jump and set off the explosive bomb. And obviously, you hit this handle, or you smack it, depending how you want to go. And boom, there goes the wall. Uh, we'll try that again though, because I think I might be able to get it to explode a little bit better. So let's set it up. Uh, so let's give it one more shot, I'll try whacking it, and yeah, that's pretty much the best I can get it to go, because unfortunately, I'll zoom in here, the actual bits to make it explode here aren't very long, so you can't get much leverage to really whack this part off, which is kind of a shame. Uh, it's interesting how it's all put together, just using one stud for each pit, like these two bits will go on to here, uh, and again, only held on by one stud. And these uh, top parts, which would form the part where you can put the dudes, uh, go on these two areas. And it's a fairly good representation of the explosive part of the the movie. And, you know, you get your Urukais and you send them through to go and gut some elves and humans and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, like I say, the lake's kind of nice, or the stream. It's all in all a nice piece bar, the explosive. It could have been a little bit better designed, I think. Now we have one of the tallest parts of the set, which is... Uh, I guess what I'll call the Tower of Helm Hammer Hand. Uh, I think it's the horn, and we'll just give it a quick spin around here so you can have a look all the way around with a nice big ladder here, which is always cool. Uh, and the horn at the top where you can put a dude. You've also got this ladder which can bend because uh, it's on joints. It's fairly cool, uh, and you've got these little segments on it as well. We'll get a better look at it as I go into a bit further detail. So it does have a door here at the bottom, which you obviously can open up uh, and get your little minifig and uh, shove it around the back and push their head through and be like, Hey, what's going on out here? Is there a war? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, you push them back through. Well, I try to. Close up the door. There you go. And this is pretty much the room. It's kind of barren, uh, but it's a nice little place where you could have some indoor fighting, I suppose. Uh, as you can see, there's not much to it. At the bottom here, there is the little box, uh, and that's really about it. And, uh, you know, maybe this is the famous box that Legolas offers Gimli to stand on during the, uh, you know, the scene outside. Uh, who can say? But we'll just uh, put the box back here, I think, and uh, just arrange this ladder a little bit better. Now, as I mentioned, you can move the ladder up like this, and if you want, what you could do is this little section here, you could get a minifigure, just using Thaden, of course, shove him in there, and if you wanted to pretend, you could argue that maybe that's a prison cell, because it's got the bars there, and there's no other reason to have anything there, I guess, but uh, that's completely up to your own imagination. I like to believe it's a little prison cell. Granted, it's fairly easy you want to break out of. Uh, and yeah, here are some other stickers. These uh, brick parts uh, aren't tampographed on, they're just stickers which you do yourself, but are very nice actually. Uh, I don't have any issue with them. And there's the actual horn, uh, which is quite cool. Uh, and this little part here is the part that you'd use to connect those two bits onto the rest of the castle, and that bit would just kind of line it all up nicely around the top area. These parts here were really fun to build. I had no idea what uh, these blue bits on the inside were. Then I slapped it all together and I was like, oh god, that's what it is, that's really cool, because it does give it a nice uh, a nice shape to it overall, I would say. And of course I mentioned the horn, uh, they can move in and out for some bizarre reason, uh, so you can have the horn going boop all the way out there, uh, if you had any reason to. Um, 
Is there anything? Oh, I added these two fire bits at the top because I had the extra and I thought, why not? The shape here is kind of cool as well. Uh, on the top, you can have the uh, the part you blow into, I guess. I don't know what that's called. I'm not a musician right there. Uh, so we'll get Gimli because he was... We'll get Gimli, because he was the one that did it. Shove him there, and you know, he can blow that trumpet or horn. And uh, make it shake and really get all the troops going as I completely lost one of the horns. Uh, ha ha ha. Uh, you can see him just through that little hole there. Uh, I'll aim the light. So you can just about see him, uh, at least through this light anyway. Uh, but he's there, you know, he can see out over the battlefield if you want him to, and yeah. Here's the piece. It's easy enough to put back on should it happen to fall off and it rumbles and, you know, gets all the troops pumped up for fighting in that final stand against all of the, the armies of Saruman uh, at this point. So it's it's a big piece, but it's, uh, it's a nice bit. I, I was surprised I had the horn in there. And here is the inner keep, I suppose you'd call it, with this nice moving up and down bridge to connect it to the uh, outer walls. Uh, got the flags up here, which are quite nice, but knock off. Little flamey torch, which also gets knocked off fairly easily, because it's just a, a one-peg affair. Uh, the inside of the castle is kind of where it's all at, though, people. This is where all the stuff gets shown. We've got this nice flag, which is a sticker, but it's a very nice sticker, I will say. Uh, we've got a little rat, which you could argue is kind of a minifigure, but not really. Uh... Yeah, a little rat. I, I, you know, it's it's nice that it's there, but it is kind of a giant rat if you think about the scale of a minifigure compared to it. But it's nice that it's there. It shows that the castle is a castle. Uh, we do have a little chicken leg, or turkey leg, because uh, when it's got chicken legs, it's always better. So you can give this little chicken leg to, I don't know, an Urukai uh, berserker, because he's hungry. It's a bit faffy to get in his hand, especially just fiddling around. It does have a, a peg to hold in a little bit better, but he can go nom nom nom, uh, as you always have to do. Uh, it does have a nice plate, so you can put your one bit of chicken uh, for everybody in that bowl, and everybody's happy, because uh, no one complains when they're in Helm's Deep. Uh, we have the chair or throne here, as I take it out. Come on. There we go. Uh, which is cool. It's got a few stickers on it, and the build for it's quite nice, actually, as I put it back together. Uh, it does look like a throne rather than just a seat. It does have a, this part here is a sticker, and it's a nice one at that. Uh, you know, it does move back, and you can open it up for whatever reason. I'm thinking it's, it was just for the build, so you could make it look as nice as it does, rather than just a normal chair. And it, it's a fairly successful, you know, throne for a king, I would argue. And it is a bit awkward to put back, so I won't. Uh, overview of it, we've got weapon racks as well, so you do get some extra, extra weapons if you ever felt like you needed a spear or an extra sword. And it just looks like a nice meeting area. You've got the two seats there, you've got two glasses, nice table. Uh, and the outside wall, again, is very nice uh, with all the detailed bricks, as I mentioned before, uh, and openings. And I do like the tower there where Gimli's standing. It's got a nice oomph to it with the, the shape of the design there. It's uh, It makes it stand out a little bit more than it would do normally, I would say. And I'm sure you can tell once you've got a couple of dudes in here and they're sitting around, I don't know, discussing about how having a chicken leg between three people is kind of sucky. Uh, you know, the, the scene really plays out. Maybe you have a berserker in the background with his headset on fire running around just for people's general amusement, because hell, they're evil, so it's fine to make them look like fools. So, so finally we'll move on to the outer keep, I guess, of Helm's Deep, I think it's called. And the first feature we'll talk about here is the staircase. Uh, it does slide open, like so, and for some reason you get a little skull, which you can just shove in there. Uh, I didn't, because I've got a better use for it. Uh, the front door was a really fun build, and it's uh, just awesome. You can have your Urukai just, like, smacking the door, going, let me in. Uh, you push the doors open, because that's what you can do. Uh, really nice, as I've mentioned. And uh, you can, I don't know, uh, get uh, Thade in here, and he can ride out, as he does in the movie, as I mentioned, when the horn's blown, and he can ride... Oh, I, he's a good point to uh, show how he goes on his hind legs, and he looks awesome right in front of the door. Next up, we have the side door here, the hidden door, where uh, Aragorn and Gimli come out, and uh, just like that. And here's the feature, uh, the tossing of the dwarf, if you want. It's basically a catapult, obviously. You shove him in there, you get your Aragorn when his hair doesn't fall off. <laughs> uh, and you can just plop him there and uh, toss me. 
Toss the dwarf. So, uh, yeah, let's find something to toss Gimli at. So we'll get a, an Urukai and just shove him there. And we uh, He went too far. I was uh, too insane with my flicking power. So we'll try with Aragorn here and see how Aragorn makes the the leap over to the bridge. And a little gentler. A little bit better, but he still still overshoots it. You can fiddle around with it, though, I'm sure. It's, it's fun either way. And now we have uh, these parts here, which you can flick up like this, and it would be where the arrows would shoot through. Uh, so we'll just get uh, Haldir and, you know, place him there, and he go pew pew pew. Uh, it's a shame that they're not up a little higher, because it would be nice to have a bit more clearance so you could actually get a figure to look through and shoot. But, you know, a bit of a shame, but whatever. Uh, we have a catapult here, of course, which you can flick like that. Nothing too special. Uh, these little parts here are what you'd call the ammo, I guess, the big chunks of rock, and they fit in very nicely. Uh, and just like with Gimli, you, you flick it, and uh, depending on how hard you flick, depends how far they go. It's kind of crazy. But I did mention I had another use for the skull, and I like to demoralize my enemy because I'm kind of a sick freak. So what I like to do is I like to get a human skull, and uh, yeah, flick that at the enemy and freak them the hell out. And before I forget, we have a ladder here as our final accessory. It's actually fairly cool. I did like it a lot. I like these parts here. The, they do pop off fairly easily, so you need to be aware of that. But it's nice for latching onto the wall there and having your Urukai climb up it. And they can actually hold on because it is just a little peg system, so you can clip them on. And, you know, they hang on fairly successfully. It's a good attempt at a ladder. I, I'd like to have seen maybe another one or two more. Uh, just to have a bit more of them, but it's still a very cool little accessory to have. So that's really all I have to say about the Lego Helms deep set. It did take me over four hours to build it, so I did think that, yes, it is expensive, but the amount of time I played with it and had fun building it uh, was worth it. I didn't feel I was cheated out of my money. Everything I was doing felt like the price I had paid was worth it. Uh, I can understand some people not want to for fork out £100 or whatever the dollar equivalent is of that, because it is a lot of money. But it's a perfect Christmas gift, really. Uh, it's that big purchase that you want to get for Christmas and go, Ooh, this was, uh, this was good. This is something you can do on Christmas Day, spending the four hours building this. And hey, if you're in the UK, you could watch Doctor Who while doing it as well. Who knows? Uh, but as my first LEGO review, please tell me if you enjoyed this. I do have more LEGO bits here and there which I could review, but I thought why not start off with a really big complex one. Uh, so let me know how it went, guys, and uh, I will catch you for another review in the future at some point. So thank you once again, and uh, I'll see you next time, I suppose.